There is, as far as I can tell, and I've thought about this for several decades now, only one solution to the problem of human energy and energy consumption, to the problem of competition and artificial scarcity and warfare. There's only one solution to that problem. The only solution to that problem is, as you're probably well aware, the spiritual dimension, which allows a recognition of oneself in the other. At that stage, um, privacy won't matter. The predominant paradigm of our current era, which has held true for many centuries, is one of competition over scarce, limited natural resources that are requisite for our continued survival. It's a difficult problem. One of the reasons that this problem continues to exist is due to a fundamental ignorance or lack of understanding on the individual mind level. We don't really get it. We don't really see, okay, yes, we're all family. Yes, we're all brothers and sisters. Okay, and um, not only that, but in the sense that looking at another person, I see myself. Looking at another person, I see my own like looking at your own body. Like I say, it's my hand. And in that recognition, there is no separation between myself and the other person. And therefore the thought does not even begin to arise of self-harm. It's like, I've never thought about chopping off my own hand and most people probably haven't, not in any serious capacity. Um, it's just not even something that would occur to you because it's you, part of you, and it's being used effortlessly to carry out tasks involving the whole body system. Similarly to that, as we are part of a body system individually, we are part of a global, universal, whatever, there's a global, global body system of all people. Um, and at a certain point, when enough people have recognized that and internalized that and decided and made the choice to promote that understanding, um, as opposed to more of an egocentric or self-centered desire, um, which is so hard to let go of because it's just billions of years of biological reprodu reproductive um, programming that um, it's hard. I mean, it's it's hard. It's a it's a very very basic operating system that's kind of underlying all of the rest of it. And it's hard to actually modify that because the rest of it is built up on top of it. Um, so it's not, it's not a matter of like sending instructions on down. Okay, let's just change this. I mean, there's a whole new paradigm uh, required. It's just like a whole, a completely different understanding of what we are and what we're doing here. Uh, it's not just about survival. It's not just, it's, it's uh, we've gotten lost. Um, and we, we constantly feel this need to fill our lives with all these different things that we don't even really know how to manage our own energies. Um, we overexert ourselves on a daily basis and then allow a unsustainable means of balancing and rebalancing and trying to compensate for that overexertion, which just leaves us even in a more of a deficit the next day. Um, and it's just called kicking the can down the road and we do it individually and we do it as a society. Um, what is more fundamental is like, we have no other option besides letting go of our self-centered desire for control and protection. And it's a hard sell because it requires, you know, the trust in humanity and the trust that other people are not going to exploit you, which 
if you've ever decided to trust people, you'll find out that they will exploit you because, again, basic human nature. Um, and it's not until enough people join that new system and it actually becomes more costly to uphold the old system um, when that tipping point comes that it'll be more enticing for those individuals who are in power and have more to protect and more to hold on to, you know. Take a very long time. It's very strategic. On A lot of people are not so human-centric. A lot of people are not so life-centric. A lot of people are actually very um, me-centric. They just care about the ego identity and not so much the heart or the spirit or the um, life, life itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, people care about the idea. People care about the idea, the thought of themselves. Um, so we, we're really still working through, like, how do we actually incorporate the whole mental self into this larger body of work that we've done in evolution? So my thoughts aren't really clear, et cetera. I'm kind of meandering all over the place. But, um, but privacy is not even really an issue. It doesn't even really exist. And um, at the end of the day, what will happen is we won't have technological privacy. That, that game will eventually get old. Because it's uh, going using all of our resources to make it more and more difficult to. I mean, what are we protecting? Our our bank accounts, essentially, our identities, <laughs> uh, which are just fabricated passports that are that are, that allow us to conduct that commerce. Um, at the end of the day, identities will be self-validating. And the reason why, why privacy won't exist anymore is that human beings will naturally respect each other's dignity. And I could look, but I'm not going to. I don't need to. Why would I need to? I personally came to that conclusion on my own many, many, many years ago. I was interested in computers, computer hacking and freaking and all these things. Um, and... Once you get the sense of, okay, yes, I can be in another person's space without permission. I can sneak in and they won't know. I can observe everything that they're doing and saying. And then you realize, hmm, so that's, well, what's the point? Because that's not me. I'm me. I don't need to worry about what, else, what someone else's business is and what they've got going on. It's actually irrelevant to me. And so you just learn a sense of respect. You just... You stop getting curious. You stop. You, you, you don't feel the urge to steal, to lie, to cheat, to manipulate. You don't feel that urge anymore because it's just you leave them be. That's another person who's just like you. In fact, they are you. They're a reflection of you. And it's a game. Um, and we all have our own situation to deal with. And people don't like to deal with their own situations for some reason, and they like to just mess around with other people's situations instead. Um, but eventually that's all gonna kind of let itself go. At which point, um, we, may, we, we may have the inherent privacy, which is just, I'm respecting your boundaries and you're respecting mine. And I think that that is sort of the more advanced or more evolved version, the next, not, not version, but it's a, an evolved attribute of the species that we're, um, we're just not sure if it's possible or we're not, we're, too, we're not sure if it's fair or we're not, we're afraid we're going to lose, we're going to die, we're not going to have enough food to eat today. And, you know, it's going to be too dark, it's going to be too cold, it's going to be uncomfortable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, personally, I mean, I just, you have to have a faith in humanity. You just have to, you just have to do that. Um, it's interesting to me that we're able to, that, that, that the power of you know, hundreds or thousands of, of supposedly good and healthy and sane people um, cannot even contend with like one unstable individual, right? Like it takes so much resources to just handle one 
murderer, one serial killer, one, you know, et cetera, you know, one mastermind criminal. Um, and that game of like the good versus the evil, it's, it's, it's an old, boring game. It's not actually interesting at all. I thought it was cool when I was a little kid, but I grew up, you know, people need to grow up eventually. We all do. Um, there are other games that we're gonna play that are just a lot more fun. Better for everyone. Not like a mandate. It's not like you have to do that. It's like, it's actually healthier for you. It's actually healthier for all of us if we, if we play more cooperative games. It's just a fact. You know, and you see it uh, popping up. It's been popping up over the years. But people, people like to co-opt that cooperation as just yet another competitive strategy, which is not. It is and it's not. Um, there's actually a way of doing that, that you have to give up the security. You have to give up that promised land in the future because you're never going to get it. No one's ever going to get it. And unfortunately for a lot of folks, like they're not really willing to give up any freedom whatsoever um, because they're afraid they're going to lose. Like you're not going to lose your individuality. You're not going to lose yourself, your preferences, your identity. No one's going to tell you you can't do this or you can't do that. Um, that's that is the like that's that's like the socialist communist fear that we will be kind of whitewashed into this bland subservience and just no one really gets to have any uh, character. I mean, we we all want to express ourselves, and it all just comes down to a matter of respect. And there are only there are very few basic ground rules that apply. Um, I know that Christianity and Islam and Judaism and they try to codify that into rules and commandments and things like that a couple thousand years ago. And I don't know how well that went. I'm not a historian, but uh, I don't <laughs> I don't think most people really got the picture. You know, uh, not enough to override that basic instinct. Um, so privacy is not a concern. Um, until there, uh, until there is a, a true globalization, like a real, you know, we lose the borders until we lose all the artificial borders. Uh, it's going to still appear that way, though. Takes time. You know, and it's hard to let go. And it's hard to let go of tradition. It's hard to let go of culture. All those beautiful, beautiful aspects of our history, uh, which simply cannot be upheld in the modern era. It's just not happening. Um, all of those oral traditions that are lost, all of the languages that are lost, the dances, the music, uh, the food. It's all, you know, we try to preserve as much as we can to look back and say, oh, well, isn't that beautiful, you know, but also you had to be there, <laughs> kind of had to be there. Um, who knows what the new culture will be? So maybe it's something that is an inner experience that springs forth from the individual. I don't know. I don't know. It takes, it's going to take time, you know. People have been talking about this for a long time now, but especially, yeah, the whole counterculture movement and all that, they, they really tried to pop that forward. Um, religion, religious, religious scholars and spiritual aspirants and things, they've been talking about this for thousands of years. Takes And, and back then they knew, they were like, wow, there's only like a handful of us talking about this now. We're, we're in for the long haul. <laughs> talking about thousands and thousands of years, you know, it's not going to happen in my generation or in the next generation, but who knows, man. But for me personally, it's like, I uh, am not able to participate in really what are what I'd call like really, really unethical activity. Um, it's, it's not even a matter of like pushing through those, those barriers. It's just my body says, Oh, sorry, you tried to do this, you're going to get hurt. It's, it's, it's incompatible with the existence of this body. 
you can't act that it's like there's no you cannot act that way you just can't do it um and it's so been so surprising to me over the years how like my my ethical and moral framework has um clarified itself to a degree that it's so obvious what not to do um and I'm really just kind of honing in on, okay, well, where is that place that's actually in alignment for myself that is truly not doing any harm? You know, that is, is the, 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 the best um, channel for good to actually happen. You know, that's, that's really the, the crux of it all is putting yourself in that position to allow the most amount of good and the least amount of harm to happen in this experience and through you. And for me, you know, stealing people's personal data and information and using it against them is not it. And it's just not it. And harming babies and children is just not it. It's just not it. I'm clear on that. You know, it's not even a question. Um, as to how you make a living, as to how you survive, that's the question. But this is maybe one of the more convoluted talks that I've done. Um, it's like I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know enough about what I'm talking about to make it sound coherent or to feel coherent. Um, and it's also so far out there and like it's not today, it's not right here, right now. So it's kind of hard to get a hold of. It's like, what can you do right here and right now? Because that's where you are, right here and right now. So that's where we have to begin is where we are. Finding the thread of whatever is like that positive flow of energy is where we have to go, right? This is not falling back on unpleasant and uncomfortable habit patterns. Uh, it's not reacting. It's finding a space inside of ourselves where we can hone in on what is that flow of positive energy that's truly good, that feels good in our heart, that we know is pure and not corrupted with all of the other, you know, and having that illuminate all the rest of the activity. So that when you're involved in shenanigans, you're still aware, okay, here I am. Now, how do I move through these shenanigans in a way that is productive, helpful, not harmful, beneficial? Um, it's easy to feel into it and to talk about it or to imagine it, but then like actually taking those steps, um, Me personally, it's where do I find that in my body, in my situation right now, where most of the normal channels aren't available to me. Um, most of the normal, hey, just go and do it, that's not available to me. Um, There is some, there's a feeling of positivity, a feeling of um, health, energy, vitality, vibrance. It's like, it's there. And what's so interesting is that like, well, okay, what if we, how, what if we just let that be there? What if we just let it be there? Not try to use it, 
not to try to use it. Just let it come forth and illuminate the activity, even if that activity seems to be absolutely nothing at all. Even if it seems like everyone is judging you for what you're doing or what you're not doing, just let that feeling or that, that joy or that, um, I don't even know what you would call that, but it's like a connection that feels good, that does not depend on other people. It does not depend on the judgments of the people around you. It does not depend on all of the vast and myriad pressures that we face in this increasingly complex world. And finding that feeling and then holding it or just allowing it to be there in the body. And that's changing the functions of your nervous system. It's changing the connections that are being made in your brain, your nervous system. It's changing your neurochemistry. Um, and how do we... How do we actually know where that is or how to touch that when the conditions change? When we're too tired or we're too hungry or we're too stressed out or we're too sick or we're too hurt? How do we know how to find that when it's not ideal conditions? Because we just get washed away by all of the emotions and the reactivity and all the other things that are happening um, and, and lose sight of this we're trying to grow the, uh, this space within the body to allow uh, positive energy to form and to start to circulate in a space. You know, that could be like a heart space. That could be an abdominal space. Could be a mental space. I don't know, somewhere. Um, maybe it's different for everyone, you know? And when you have that feeling of like goodness for yourself, you might walk out the front door and you might encounter people and you might uh, find it reciprocated and shared. And you might also find it assaulted, you know? And when you do, how do you work with that? Like, that's the most challenging part. How do you, how do you, oh, they're both sides are hard. <laughs> Sharing joy and giving and taking it without fearing you're going to lose it. That's not a, an easy task either. But holding that and then if we get guarded and protected of it and people are trying to assault us, that's you're in, you're in combat, you're in conflict then. That's not going to work. Um, and then just giving it away is not going to work. Some people can do that. Um, but typically the ego ends up taking over and we end up feeling like we have betrayed ourselves or we've devalued ourselves. And it's so easy to get caught back in that game. It's the social game, the competition. It's not a fun game. It's not, it's just not it. What can I say? It's just, it's just not it, you know, not it. You know, you can just opt out if you want. I mean, you have to participate in the form, but inwardly, there's honest ways that you can opt out, you know, without putting on a farce, without having some sort of inner conflict, um, but actually working with it. Hard to know how to do that and then put money in your pocket, right? Um, the whole system is bunk though, guys. The whole system is bunk. Um, exploiting others for your own personal gain. It's just, it doesn't jive. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's not honest. Uh, it's out, it's becoming, quickly it's becoming outdated and it's very unsustainable. Um, so why not? Uh, Observe that and adjust based on that, you know, it's going to happen anyway. 
what I'm talking about is inevitable. It's inevitable. It's not like concrete, oh, there's nothing, like there's no other possibility, but the, the probability of that happening is so high that it's not even really, why would you even consider the alternative? Because um, if that happens, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're fucked anyway, so. <laughs> Everyone, every single person in the world has a vested interest in making this project work. Um, we're all at different stages and we're all at different levels of understanding and maturity and um, cooperation is the only way forward. Uh, leveraging and working with other people's strengths um, to shore up your own weaknesses, that's the only way forward. Um, and what everyone eventually will ask is, well, how, at most people will eventually probably come to the question of like, well, what, how can I be of service to this project? And finding that answer for themselves, not like just fitting into someone else's need necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Like that so many people just get lost and get put in the wrong places because they're trying to fill someone else's need or desire or whatever. Um, at the cost of their own self. And no one wins in that situation at all. So there is a certain type of self-centeredness that is required here. It's just different than the type of self-centeredness that we usually think of. This is like a, I value myself enough to recognize what my true skill, talent, purpose, or whatever is, and connecting myself in a way that actually aligns with that. Um, which may not look anything like what I or anyone else believes that it could. Uh, might not even be something that is apparent at the moment uh, or imaginable at the moment. A lot of people are going to have to make up new games and new jobs and new things to play with um, and be more creative and more inventive. Um, For me personally, I mean, I can only say for myself, thinking this way is a rare gift that happens once in a while when conditions are just right. I have less pain in my body than usual, and I'm more well fed than usual, and some of the basic needs are met for, you know, a few hours it might be. There's like a little window of opportunity that arises, and we can see and peek our head out over the turbulence, the waves, and it's like, oh, okay, yep, I can see what's going on, it's clear. All right, yep, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> so, all right, now let me go back to drowning, you know, but, but we don't wanna go back to drowning. That's not, that is not the goal. <laughs> Gotta stop fighting. I don't know. For me, the, the competition, uh, it's lost its edge. I can, like, I can think back on older versions of myself, uh, past lives, maybe, that it was like gripping and compelling and um, bloodlust. It felt good. It felt, oh, yeah, so good to fight, to kill. Uh, it's not fun. It's no more fun. It's, it's, it's like... It just leaves a bad taste in your mouth at this point. Um, yeah, it's like the, the, the game's over, the, the jig is up, the game is over. It's like, it, it really just feels like time to move on to a new game now. That's not the game anymore. It's not competition. It's just not it. It's just not it. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know how, how exactly I'm going to plug in now. Um, but we'll see. Huh, 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 huh.
Yeah, it's just not. I mean, it's just not it. Just not it. People are trying all sorts of different things. I know that. To work with this. Force is not it. Violence is not it. Coercion is not it. Deceit is not it. It's just not. Those are just these little masks, or these little weird layers of like illusion, just like funny glass that we have over our eyes that's not seeing things clearly. It's just not. It's easy to get, to see through that and, and, you, and you oh no, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. This is how, no, no, the world is like this. The world is like this. The world, it is like this. I swear to God, it is like, I know it is. And uh, there's nothing, it's, uh, you know, you can get so like, uh, it's, it has to be. It's, you're caught in this trauma. It's like vibrating in a certain way in your body. Oh, it has to be like this. It's, uh, it's so horrible. It's so hard. It's so hard. Uh, you know, and you're, you're just caught. That trauma is not flowing. It's not like releasing in the body. Um, and if that's the case, then so be it. You know, you can't, you can't um, untraumatize yourself. You can't, can't, you can't like step out of it if it's, if it's, if that's what's happening, it has to happen and it's going to happen. Um, it just takes time to play itself out. You know, you don't, you don't change it or speed it up or slow it down or force it to happen. It just naturally happens. Which is, I think, why the whole, the whole spiritual Zoom thing, whatever, I don't, Zoom, I don't mean Zoom like Zoom, but spiritual Zoom, you know, um, yeah, I think it helps to a certain degree. Um, mindfulness or meditation or whatever. Spiritual community, groups, conversation, dialogues. Just to bring an aware, a broader awareness of these things so that while you're like caught in the trauma, you can also have a perspective of like, yes, and this is also happening. Okay, so I'm also here and I'm seeing it happen and I am it and it is happening to me and it is like this and it's horrible. And I know that for myself, um, being in severe debilitating pain makes it basically impossible to gain a different perspective, a wider perspective, because you're flooded and just bombarded with signals from the nervous system coming up to the brain saying, I am in a serious fucking medical crisis right now. Need help. Please move the organs into a different position. Please stitch up this part of my flesh. It's not, you know, like uh, you don't have time. You don't have time for the lofty thoughts, right? And so a lot of people are caught in those kinds of situations of just immediate survival. Um, so what can we do, you know? If you have the privilege, if you have the opportunity, you have the time, the resources, the wherewithal, the faculties, um, then, it, you know, if you feel that it is a responsibility, your self-responsibility to address this and to move, you know, move forward with Project Human, you know, that, well, but it's really just Project Life. It's not human. It's life in general. We don't have, um, this is evident. We don't have any claim to the earth, to space, uh, in any way, shape or form, more or less than any other species do. Um, we have the, the silly position of being able to, <laughs> You know, humans in many ways are just less evolved than other species. It's just, I, how else could you say it? I don't know. That's like a comparison. You can't, it's not apples to oranges, but like humans are, are very like, you don't see a lot of other species behaving that way. Um, it's obvious. Like you look at trees and things like that. They're much wiser than we are. Very, it's very clear. Um, and we're just running around, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're in a very special position, a very unique position as humans. It's fun. It's interesting. It's kind of horrific, kind of gross. 
And, um, you know, I'm just trying to find out what the heck am I doing here, you know? Too bad I don't have like the right uh, life coach or the right business coach or the right spiritual guru or something like that. And they can just tell me, oh, yes, you're here for this purpose or you know, go on a vision quest, vision quest. Go do some more, you know, go to some more psychedelics, hallucinogens, figure it out and you'll be on your path for a, for a little bit anyway. But I could just accept this as the path I'm on right now. It does not look like what most people's paths looks like. Looks like paths look like. I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm tired of talking. I'm actually just tired in general and I would like to rest. Today is very much a day of rest. So hey. <laughs> what a Come on, brain. I, I think I need some sleep is what I'm getting out of this whole conversation. It's like, need to rest and just let things be because this is a lot of mental chatter and a lot of mental noise that it's not really like giving me any anything. So I don't know, maybe I'll throw the video up on YouTube like I always do and, <laughs> and we'll see what happens, but I think I'm gonna go rest. It's so hard, isn't it, to rest? I want to be doing things. I want to do activity and action. And it's like, bro, you got to rest. I've, I've been resting. I've already been resting. And every person around, oh, no, 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 that's not true. But my family, the people that are around me are like, why aren't you doing any, you know, they, even though they don't say it anymore, it's just like, well, why aren't you doing anything? You should be just, just do anything. Just do something. Just get, go get a job. It doesn't matter what job, because I've been unemployed. Get a job, it doesn't matter what job, just do anything. It's like, oof, yeah. I have, to, I have to really be careful to take care of myself because the people around me have no effing idea the situation that I'm in and the conditions that are in my life and what happens when I do X, Y, and Z. It's not the same as what happens when they do X, Y, and Z at all. <laughs> they, pl they plug in X plus Y, it comes out to three, I plug it in, it comes in, out to, you know, 941 or something. It's like completely a different situation. <laughs> so these well-meaning, uh, well-meaning people are, are just, you know, not able to connect in that way, unfortunately. But we're all on our own anyways at the end of the day. So you got to trust yourself and just as best as you can, you know. Those judgments, those societal expectations can be very strong, but you're stronger. I'm stronger. We're all individually our own. Um, we all have that dignity. We all have that inner freedom. Not even, you know what I mean? It's like, You just have to assume the best in people. You have to assume that everyone is trying their best. And when I hear, it's fr I don't want to name names, but when I hear people just being so racist and judgmental and classist and like, it's just, who, who, who do you think you are? Who, honestly, who do you think you are? You're, you're the same. You're just like them. You're, you're no different than them. You're exactly like them. You have your own personality, sure, but that's it. Emotions are the same, bodies are the same, needs are the same, desires, hopes, and dreams are the same. Just a slightly different color, but yeah, you know, you you just that's like who who where do you, who do you think you are? You think you're, you think, you think you're like, what, better, you think you're better than them? Huh, interesting, interesting, better than them. Oh, okay, oh, keep telling yourself that. Yeah, that's really sad. That makes me feel sad. 
because it seems like you feel sad. It seems like you feel really sad. To be so hurt in yourself that you look at other people and compare yourself with them and you have to make yourself into something more or less than them. You must not feel good about yourself. Not able to be yourself. Not comfortable, not safe in yourself. Having one of those like not blinking moments where the vision is more, uh, what do you call that? Where it's not focusing on anything and it's like you have a really wide field of view uh, and everything is just kind of blends together, you know? I like, I like that, it's fun. Like a wide, wide lens. And the depth of field all blends together, you know, and everything is just kind of like mush in one little blob. Not focusing. How, do, how does that even work? You're not really focusing on any one thing. Um, the eyes must just relax in some way, but where, where it, because do the eyes not need to have a focal point always? I don't know. Or is it that the, huh, maybe the mind lets go and so it's not perceiving it's, the eyes are physically, mechanically doing what they're doing. Um, and the mind is not necessarily looking down that particular neural pathway to say, okay, what am I focusing on? It's actually just more spacious and more relaxed. Because um, it is a two-way connection. But the not blinking, I, I don't know what's up with that part, why that happens sometimes. It's like trying to fix the view, which is not what you want. You got to breathe through it. I think there is something to be said, like if you're, if you're breathing and not really blinking and just having a spacious view, that can um, influence your sense of time or space in a way that's like, that's interesting. But I think I said I was going to get off this video. Oh, hey, a squirrel. <laughs> I'm not a dog, but I am human. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what they say.